Hi everyone, welcome to another Moto Cam Adventure video. Today I'm going to be showing you the Nex XD1 helmet. So with my job, I'm kind of in a unique position where I get to test out some gear. Uh, so the sales rep from Nex in the Bay Area came to me and actually gave me one of these helmets to test out. So far, I've ridden about a thousand miles with it. Uh, I've done all day long rides. I've done some kind of slower dirt stuff. I've done all of that. I will say that my biggest gripe with this helmet, just right off the bat, is that it's loud. Now, main reason is because you have that sun peak on the top. If you're able to remove that, um, which you are, you can remove that and uh, just run it as almost like a street helmet. That takes a lot of the wind noise away. Otherwise, I think one of the main other reasons is because there's some cutouts in the UPS liner for their communication system speakers. With that said, pretty much every helmet I've owned, uh, I've not been able to ride more than about 30 minutes without wearing earplugs because basically you're going to get hearing damage if you don't do that. Even the most quiet uh, shoe berth helmets or whatever are still going to be loud enough where that's going to cause damage to your hearing. One of the things that comes from it being so loud is that it actually provides a lot of airflow. There's a few main vents. Uh, first, your kind of chin vent here, and then you have some top ones here, which all have uh, three positions. Actually, the front one only has open and close. With that said, you're still going to need a pin lock, even though you have a lot of airflow. As long as you're doing any type of, you know, city commuting, riding, or anything like that, you're basically going to want a pin lock, uh, otherwise it's going to fog up on you pretty quickly, believe it or not. Now the rear has these two vents open all the time, so that's something you don't have to worry about, which is nice. And when you close up the front ones, generally speaking, you're not going to feel much draft coming out of the rear. So with it being a loud helmet, why would you want this over, say, a Shuber V1 or something like that? First off is price point. This comes in at around like $500 retail versus a Shuber V1. Uh, their new adventure helmet is probably around 829 so considerably cheaper but uh, it's kind of comparing apples to oranges because this helmet is definitely more of a dirt bike kind of style helmet versus the schubert the one is more of a road helmet with some adventure features so it's kind of a c3 pro which i don't know if you have any experience with it but like that's a pretty common helmet that most people you know really like um, but basically all they did was they added just the, the sun peak and a uh, slightly larger vent in the front. One of the major benefits of this helmet over, say, a Schuber E1 is that this is significantly lighter. Even lighter than the Shoei Hornet X2, which is their adventure style helmet. I have not compared it against the Arai XD4, but I would say that this is probably comparable in weight. I know the Arise, generally speaking, are pretty lightweight helmets. Now, why does that matter? Basically, if you're doing an all-day ride, anything that's going to weigh less is going to cause less fatigue. So if I can get a helmet that weighs, you know, 0.4 pounds less than a different helmet, that's going to benefit me down, down the line for any kind of long all-day ride. With that said, you still have some of the main features that you would expect out of a Schubert helmet on this next helmet. So you have a sun, sun visor that flips down, actuated up here, which seems like a very awkward place, and it is at first. This took me a little bit of time to get used to, probably like a few hours to really figure out where to place my hand. Once you figure it out though, it's really not a big deal. The Schubert was the same way where it has this down here, you know, you're searching for it for the first few times you're using the helmet, but as soon as you kind of use it and get used to it, it's not a big deal. So you can see that it kind of comes down and it actually has a detent that locks it in place. Now that's a huge advantage over the shoe berth since you can run this open. So you can have this open, put this down, and then this isn't going to bounce around like the shoe berth will because the shoe berth is only held down by its own weight. And this is pretty significant at low speeds in kind of desert environments and stuff because you can flip this open, you can use this, and you may get a little bit of dust or something from the rider in front of you, but for the most part, this still covers your eyes really well. This also comes down very far. It kind of covers your entire field of view, which is good. Um, I've seen some other helmets, mainly like the Arise, that have the Pro Shade that come down not too far. They have like extended versions of this. Think of it as a value factor too. 
you're getting this in the helmet already. You're not going to have to go out and buy another visor for it. So keep that in mind when looking at this helmet, comparing it to some other helmets. This helmet has a pretty significant advantage over some of the other helmets, and that's that it has a really wide field of view. You only really see a little bit of the peak at the top and a little bit down here too. But for the most part, your peripherals, at least mine, I didn't see anything from the sides of the helmet. That's a huge plus for me in terms of safety because I can basically kind of keep an eye out um, to cars to the side of me when I'm on the highway or something. So that's pretty significant of an advantage to me. What's cool about this helmet is that it's very modular in the sense that you can pull stuff off and change things out and basically make it into different helmets. I don't want to say modular in the sense that the, you know, the shoe brutes that flip up or anything, it's not that. But you have the ability to pull off this visor, you have the ability to change this out to a dirt bike style event, you have the ability to put some GoPro mounts on the top and on the sides here, and you have the ability to put in an integrated communication system. Now, while I'm on this topic, I don't know if I'd ever really do this, uh, the XCOM system that Nex sells. It's kind of a proprietary thing. I wish that they might partner with like, say a Senna or Cardo product and really integrate something that someone else is going to be using. To me, this doesn't seem like it would work too well. And you know, they're kind of a helmet company rather than a company that makes solely communication systems such as Cardo or Senna. Let's talk about the peak or sunshade, whatever you want to call it on this helmet. For me, this causes a lot of drag. It's not terrible enough where I have to pull this off for kind of long rides or something, but I would never run the extended thing that they give you. So they give you this piece that actually fits on here. You just pull these pieces off. You have some really tiny screws that are, you know, very prone to losing if you're not careful. So be careful with that. They're actually saying that they're pretty good about replacing these for you. So uh, for what it's worth, that's what I've heard from them. But anyway, this goes on and you're actually able to slide this forward and back. Now, the idea, the concept is really nice, but as soon as I use this on the road, this thing just became an absolute sale and it was pulling back on my helmet the entire time. And that could just be the setup I have with my current windscreen, because I have a very tall adventure style windscreen that kind of puts the wind like right at eye level. So if that makes any sense, I'd be catching a lot of wind up here. They kind of open this up here, uh, but I still don't think that it really is open up enough where this doesn't cause any drag, especially when you're looking left to right when you're doing a lane change. So for me, I'm just going to run it as is. Uh, the stock configuration totally works fine for me. I actually really like it for the sun. I could never see myself actually using it for any roost from other like bikes and stuff. That's kind of the purpose, the main purpose for dirt bike helmets. Uh, but this, I mean, when you're riding big adventure bikes or I mean, even dual sport bikes, you know, could be a DRZ 400 or something. I don't think you're really gonna be kicking up a whole lot of dirt. So for me, that's kind of not worth it, but it's worth it enough for the sun protection alone. So I'm going to show you right now how to change out this to this crazy vent. Uh, this makes a very big difference for the most part, and sometimes that's a bad thing. So all you got to do is pull this up, and that kind of just comes off. Now, it can be a bad thing because if you're doing highway speeds, anything uh, where you're doing long distance or anything, you probably don't want this because it's just going to be constantly kind of shooting you with air, and it's kind of annoying. Anyway, this just goes back on basically the same way that other one came off. And there's no open or close position because it's obviously open all the time. Now, that's a pretty nice feature because you can kind of use this as a kind of flexible helmet in the sense that you can almost use this as a dirt bike helmet if you wanted to. And then pull this off, you know, pull the sun visor off if you want, and basically use it as your street helmet too. That's kind of a huge value factor in my opinion. At the same time though, if you were to crash with this helmet, it's an expensive helmet compared to some other dirt bike helmets, depending on what you're comparing it to. So it's kind of iffy in that sense, but if you do some light dirt biking or something and you're not too crazy about it, this would totally be a good option. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to pull off this peak. Basically, you just push forward on both sides and these parts come off, and then you have a sheer screw, a plastic sheer screw that unscrews at the top. 
and basically it just kind of pops off. So I'll do the other side. The other side in this one seems to be a little harder to pull apart for whatever reason. Doesn't always want to come out as well. Not really a big deal because it eventually comes out with a little bit of wiggling around. But basically that comes out and then you have some plates that they give you that fit over this to really seal it up again. So basically once you pull it off you have these plates that they give you that just kind of lock in place over it and then you put this piece back on and then it just swings back and now it's on. So it's kind of nice in that sense where you have the ability to switch that out and uh, basically use it as a street helmet. This is much more effective with wind um, if that was a concern. So it's nice too if you were if you were going to do like a full day of just like highway riding to get to somewhere it's nice that you can pull that off pretty easy replace this and you're good to go for the day. If you wanted to use their XCOM system there's two screws you remove here you pull this plate off and then this plate sits in there somehow. I've never seen the XCOM, XCOM communication system so I don't know how well it works. My opinion is totally invalid for anything having to do with that. It could be the best system out there and I have no idea. So I wouldn't say don't give it a try, but for the most part for me, you know, I'm riding with people who have Cardos, who have Senas already. So I don't know if it's going to be easy to, to integrate with them or not. Um, you know, if it's just like integrating other Bluetooth devices, sometimes it's a bit iffy if it's not the same brand. Now here's something that's really cool about this helmet. I wish more manufacturers did this because they're basically kind of putting their head in the sand when it comes to the GoPros and all the other helmet cameras that our people are using. It seems like almost everyone I know now has some kind of helmet camera of some sort and they haven't really integrated it well to an extent. They give you these pieces that fit on this side here and on the other side that have a very flat surface that you can put your adhesive mount on and then you can you can have your GoPro mount or whatever it is on here, pull it off, put this back on. You have nothing there anymore. When you want to run it, you just put this back on. It also comes with a very top one, which actually sits in here underneath this here. So if I was to loosen this up, this kind of fits underneath. This locks it down. And then you have a GoPro mount for the very top. Huge win for Nexon, in my opinion, on that because no other helmet company is doing something like that and for the most part i think it's kind of crazy that they aren't because that's such a huge thing i've never been able to actually use it i usually mount my cameras on the very front which is going to be pretty much impossible on this here especially with all of these lines here too it's not like you can mount something on the side and then put some arms and stuff so it sits right here so that's a bit iffy in a sense but it's very hard to do that with a big front vent too the liners that they use on the inside of this helmet are actually really nice. They're way better than the showies that I've seen. Uh, they're very comparable to the Schubert liners, if not the same. It's kind of a cool max material. I think a few companies are using this, possibly Arai. Uh, but for the most part, I don't. I find that this doesn't get nasty smelling at all. Um, stays very dry. I've never had any of my sweat kind of stick in here or anything. Sorry sales rep who gave me this. <laughs> I did sweat in the helmet, but at least you know I'm giving you an honest review. Um, while we're down here too, this is a removable chin skirt. I pretty much would keep this in most of the time uh, unless I was going to be doing some crazy dirt riding where I would pull this out because as soon as you pull this out, a ton of wind comes in here, which could be a good thing and again a bad thing too. Um, they're using uh, a rise kind of pull tabs for the emergency strap thing so you can pull these pads out. That's a good thing because these pads fit really tight around my head. Uh, it's kind of an, I think it's something that's supposed to seal around, try to make it quieter. Um, good on them for using this. Good on a rye for letting everyone use it and not patent it too. That's pretty awesome. So go helmet companies. <laughs> um, so basically I, I run with this in all the time. So it just kind of snaps in place, it's kind of hard to do one-handed, but um, while we're down here, let me mention something about this helmet that I'm not too fond of, but it's kind of whatever, it's not a big deal. This chin strap is super long. I have no idea why, but like when it's looped around in the D-rings, you have so much extra strap here, it's kind of annoying. It doesn't really get in the way, the wind doesn't really catch it, it's just annoying in the sense that it doesn't really need to be that long. 
Um, unless you've got some really fat dudes with triple chins or something going on there, I don't think that's totally necessary. You should probably just shorten this, guys. That would totally fix any issue I had with it. With that said, it's just your average D-ring, you know, two D-ring loop thing system where most helmets use. I do very much prefer the shoe berth ratcheting system. And also I think they're used on Nolan helmets too. I don't think shoe berth has uh, put a patent on that since Nolan is using it. If they have, that's totally fine. If they haven't though, I'm not sure why these guys don't try to integrate that or why other people don't try to integrate that. There may be something in terms of safety that I'm not seeing, but for the most part, this is probably gonna be just as strong as the plastic that they use for the shoe berths. I mean, hell, they make guns out of plastic now. I'm sure that that's going to be okay. So for me, the really quick ratcheting system, system on my shoe berth is kind of a huge plus. It's kind of a con on this where you have just the, you know, typical D-ring loop thing. Let's focus again on this clear visor here. Uh, you can see that it goes up, kind of stays up. There's no ratcheting part here. Like, it, I mean, sure, it kind of sits in an in-between position. I don't know if you'd ever need to use that. Um, probably just something so it doesn't fall down if you put it up only that far. But anyway, this comes down, this locks in place. It does create kind of a good seal, but I mean, again, you still get a lot of airflow, even if you have all the vents closed. So for me, that's kind of necessary for safety, just so this doesn't pop up uh, when you don't want it to. But for the most part, that's not a big deal. Now, in terms of safety, this visor is super thick. I've noticed that this is thicker than most other companies have used, um, and that's a good thing. And I've also seen that this has not scratched whatsoever. I've got pelted with bugs. Um, some of the areas around California, it's like as soon as you hit some of the some of the more wetland areas. I don't even want to say that because California's in a drought, but. You know, as soon as you hit any of those areas, you just get pelted with bugs. And so this is just slammed with them. And I was just able to clean it off and no scratches or anything. So pretty big plus in my opinion. These visors are definitely pretty awesome. They come pin lock ready too. They have kind of a screw system here, really small screws. Again, something that you might be losing if you're not careful. But again, they probably will provide you with new ones if you lose them. Um, I'm sure that won't be an issue. Moving on, I noticed that this helmet in particular doesn't really have a whole lot in terms of reflective panels. Um, not every helmet does come with a lot of reflective stuff. Uh, my shoe berth kind of has something going on for the eyebrows, similar to what this has here. Um, but you also have some reflective panels in terms of the back. This doesn't have anything in the rear. Uh, maybe just make your next logo uh, kind of a sticker or something, the reflective sticker. You know, do something like that, similar to Schubert, um, just so you have something back there. With that said, this is also a pretty bright color helmet. So um, at night, I mean, you're still going to see this a lot better than my matte black Schubert helmet. So let's talk about the shape of this helmet for a second. So obviously with the front here being a little bigger, you're able to get a little more air in, a little more airflow. That's good. Excellent. Um, for the rear, you have this kind of... Uh, goggle shape to it how do i say this better the goggle straps can go around here a lot easier if you're running goggles instead of this you can flip this up run goggles you can pull this off and run goggles do whatever that's pretty nice uh if you notice the tortec carbon aventuro helmet is actually made by these guys it's essentially the same helmet just carbon fiber no sun visor on the inside um, but it has a goggle strap here too. So something to consider, um, especially if you only want to spend like, I think a hundred dollars more for the carbon version, uh, you'd still be supporting these guys, I think. So maybe not as much, but, um, you know, it's almost worth the price difference in my opinion. I was able to actually see one of the Tortec helmets come in. Uh, the Tortec sales rep came down and showed us the carbon Aventura helmet and I pretty much fell in love with it. I think it's a pretty solid helmet. Um, just like this helmet, this helmet is still very nice. Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm trying to give it every possible con I can come up with. And really, I haven't really come up with enough to make it, to justify not buying this helmet. So for me, I would definitely give this a good look. I would definitely look look at this over, say, a shoe berth. If you think you're gonna be doing a lot more slow off-road riding, 
versus kind of road riding to get to a destination. If you're riding a big adventure bike, maybe this might not be the helmet for you. If you're riding kind of a dual sport, smaller bike, this could be a perfect helmet for you. You can still use this in other roles, obviously. You can pull off the visor, use it as a road helmet. They sell something similar as just kind of a road helmet that's a full carbon helmet, similar to what the Tortec is. Um, I saw that too. The sales rep actually is wearing one of those that uh, is pretty freaking lightweight. <laughs> I think it's really cool. Um, I don't know why more people aren't doing carbon helmets, but uh, maybe it's just a cost thing. Before I wrap it up, uh, I'll show you some of the colors that they offer on their website. I got to see initially the kind of brown, tannish, military brown kind of thing going on there. It's a matte finish with like a rubberized coating, similar to what they have on the visor here. Um, super cool. I could see that they have really nailed it with some of the colors. This color scheme is really cool. They have kind of a KTM-ish one that I was almost initially going to get, uh, which would be hilarious riding on my GS. Um, they have some other kind of graphic schemes going on. I think some of the graphic stuff might be a little more expensive. Uh, I'll quote that in the video, but otherwise I really like the plain, uh, colors actually. I, they have like a kind of an anthracite kind of dark grayish color. That's super cool. Um, they have a matte black, which is kind of whatever. I mean, there's a lot of matte black helmets out there. I'm kind of getting sick of them personally, but you know, if it matches all your gear, <laughs> then go for it. Um, but I really like that kind of matte brown, uh, kind of coyote tan finish to it. That looks very like tactical-ish. <laughs> and that's kind of my style for a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, they offer some really cool looking helmets. I will say that that's one factor, you know, just a second kind of cool type of factor where it's like, you know, sure functions well and everything, but like these helmets do look pretty damn cool. They're not any wider than the shoe berths. Uh, they're not, they're a little taller. So it's not gonna look crazy on your head. It's not like it's like a massive thing on top of your head, like some other helmets you might see, especially modulars when people flip up those modular helmets, kind of looks like they're wearing just like a massive like mushroom on their head or something. But um, for the most part, this looks pretty solid. So you will get a lot of looks. <laughs> I get that all the time wearing this helmet at stoplights and stuff. People are like, whoa, is that Master Chief? So <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So. With that said, I would definitely give this helmet a look. I would probably give it, out of 10, probably like an 8.5 out of 10. Um, just because of the sound, the noise is kind of deafening. Um, I wouldn't even wear this really for commuting personally compared to my Schubert. My Schubert is a little quieter. It just seems to block out some of the frequencies that are definitely like higher pitch. Um, so for me, if I'm wearing this, I'm wearing earplugs pretty much all the time unless I'm in the dirt and I stop specifically for that. So hope you liked the review. Um, definitely go check these out if you can. Give it a try. They run a little large. That's something I want to say before I totally end the video. I have a medium sized head and a showy and a shoe berth and a rye I think too. And these run just a little big. They feel kind of tight at first around the cheek pads. There is a lot of break in with it. I noticed that it broke in a lot and it's actually a little loose around my cheeks now. So be careful about that. Um, definitely err on the side of a little tighter than normal. I've seen a lot of people with kind of, you know, a size or two too big for their head actually, and that's not safe either. So hope you liked the review and take care everyone. Ride safe.